accelerator companies. So I'm going to talk about Jean Jacobs. Woo woo! Everybody should know Jean Jacobs. Woo woo! She was a badass. She was a self taught academic of sorts. She actually never got a degree. She rejected a ton of honorary degrees. But she wrote a book, she loves cities. She wrote a book called The Death and Life of Great American Cities. That even if you haven't read it, you've probably been informed by it in some way. Her, I'm going to talk about her last book. It's called Systems of Survival. And it's an epic, very rich, dense, sort of unified theory of morality. And I thought it'd be cool to talk about it within five minutes. Because that seemed like a great idea. Um, so I think one of the reasons why Jane Jacobs is so great, and she's sort of, she's become a mystic in a lot of people's minds, is that she's able to see a lot of nuance and subtlety in human life and in our cities that other people did not see. Um, particularly the 20th century. And um, in Systems of Survival, she talks about what she calls two moral syndromes, these are like moral codes, that exist among humans. There's the codes of the guardians and those of uh, the merchants. And the way she describes the guardians is, you know, these are the institutions that govern our lives or governments. And they're coercive. They're able to, you know, take taxes. They're able to enact military or police force, things like that. Um, they reward loyalty. Um, they're very hierarchical. And um, meanwhile, we also have commercial organizations. And so there's the, the merchant syndrome, where you know, if, if we could be coercive with one another when we're like doing business transactions, there would be no business transactions, because you know, we actually have laws against that that govern how we behave commercially. And I would presume that most people in this room, uh, most people in the scientific community, identify more with sort of the, the merchant side of things. Um, and they see a lot of the, the, mor the morals of the guardians as, as bugs. Um, and that's not true. I think a lot of those things actually are features. We need guardian organizations. Um, we need police forces and military and taxes and things like that. But <laughs> when the two organizations start combining, so when you have like a merchant organization that behaves kind of like a commercial organization, you get what Jane Jacobs calls a monstrous hybrid. Okay? And so, you know, like a mafia is a part, like a drug cartel, a gang, these are monstrous hybrids. The U.S. Postal Service is a monstrous hybrid. So <laughs> it ostensibly exists, and I think it was created to give people access to information specifically about campaigns. Like, that's why they did it in the first place. Now they actually have the purview to just put garbage on your house, because that's how they make money. Um, we have privatized prisons now. And so we, we actually have the largest, or so the, the highest incarceration rate in the world in the United States, because there's a lot of money to be made from keeping people in prison. So you pass laws to get more people in prison for longer periods of time. What I love about this graph is that it highlights there's this, this sort of like conflict between ethics and economics. So what Jen talked about earlier, the finding a more perfect human, you find this ideal of perfection and you, you get there. You know, you try to approach it, you're always going to be approaching, you'll never get there, but you keep going. That's what the curve should look like. We have this curve instead. Um, in economics, you know, economics is about maximizing. Like, you don't care about the limits like the ideal incarceration level. You just want to maximize. Study economics. So I want to talk about a couple other. So this is the fourth estate. Okay. So, so the fourth estate, like ideally, the news media exists to keep people informed, but there's no money in that, so we have anti-racism. Now, a co-conspirator of news media are political campaigns, and these are the trickiest. And I really think they're a monster's hybrid. Because heuristically, it seems like a political campaign is a public service thing, because that's how we elect public servants. But they're merchant organizations. A political campaign is something that's trying to get you to transact with them, okay, in a very specific way. And so that's why, you know, it's not hard to find people who have gone from a political campaign to working in public service that quickly become disaffected. Because it turns out that what they're doing is completely different than what they did in uh, the political campaign. And so what, what we think about, what I think about all the time, what we think about at Measure Voice is like, well, now these guardian organizations, we're all here working really hard to get governments to be more open and talk about what they do. So what, like, what should they sound like? There's really no model for this because they've never had to speak before. You know, the, the ultimate symbol of a guard well, is a guard, right? So a guard doesn't talk. I mean, especially these guys at uh, Buckingham Palace, they don't talk. This is the, the perfect symbol, like the voice of an organization. You put a person in front of the building, I don't have to talk to you. Like, I'm, I'm here guarding things. We do our thing, you don't have to worry about us. That's no longer the case. These organizations need to identify, they need to find who they are, you know, and, and really think about that before they speak, you know, so that they can speak in a way that makes sense to them and makes sense to the people that they're serving. And so, you know, I, I found this framework very enlightening. Um,
But the, the guardian thing and it being like stoic and closed sounds kind of negative. So the word I like to use is stewardship. You know, we have these guardian organizations because we have a limited amount of resources. We have a limited amount of land, um, and governments exist, so you know they can they can take care of that and take care of us. So we need them both. Um, I thought this framework was really enlightening to me as, as soon as I started learning about it. Um, I started seeing it everywhere. So thank you for your time. You should read the book because I did not do it justice. <laughs>